28 years ago, a small group of forward-looking dentists in New York City, feeling that certain disputed questions in dental pathology demanded investigation by men trained in science, who were apparently not available in the dental profession, conceived the idea of interesting a biological chemist in dental research. They took up the matter with the head of the Department of Biological Chemistry at Columbia University, little dreaming how far the byproducts of that relationship would outgrow their original purpose. The young man they interested in dental research was a human dynamo who had much more color in his hair then than now. His name was William J. Guise, a man then unknown in dentistry, now synonymous with dental research and dental progress in many fields. July 11, 1937. The leaders of the dental profession came together from all parts of the United States and Canada under the auspices of the American College of Dentists, the American Dental Association, the Canadian Dental Association, the American Association of Dental Schools, the National Association of Dental Examiners, the American Association of Dental Editors, the Dental Section of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the International Association for Dental Research, and the Omicron Kappa Upsilon Society to pay homage to an outstanding benefactor of dentistry. In this videotape, we will see why William J. Guise was the most influential person to the development of dentistry in the 20th century in the United States and Canada. Nineteen hundred. America was seeing vast changes in transportation, communications, and in health care. However, dentistry had made little progress since its birth in the 1840s. Dentists were still not considered part of the health care team and had not yet organized into a profession. Mechanics, not medicine, was the basis for dental education, and one young professor was inspired to crusade for a better way. Dr. William John Guise was born February 21, 1872, in Reisterstown, Baltimore County, Maryland. Shortly after the death of his father in 1874, he returned with his mother to her parents' home in Mannheim, Pennsylvania, where he resided during his boyhood. He was graduated from the Mannheim High School in 1888 and from Gettysburg College in 1893. At Gettysburg, he edited the College Monthly and the Junior Annual and captained the baseball team during his junior and senior years. Guise attended Yale from 1893 to 1897, where he received the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. He was appointed to the medical teaching staff of Columbia University in 1898, passing through the usual grades of promotion from instructor to the chair of full professor in 1905. Here he founded the first department of biological chemistry in a medical school. While at Columbia, he married Mabel L. Lark of Millersburg, Pennsylvania. In the spring of 1909, Guise was approached by two prominent New York dentists, Drs. Howe and Merritt, who recruited him to do research on the prevention of dental caries. Guise quickly found there was little research that was being done in this area, and there was a prevailing indifference to dentistry in scientific, educational, and medical circles. What were the reasons for this prevailing indifference to dentistry? Dentistry was generally regarded more as a trade than a profession. It was provincial in its tendencies and relationships and did not encourage its practitioners to participate actively in public affairs. Its science, chiefly that of prosthetic mechanics, had exerted little influence beyond the useful applications. Its growth in professional quality had been greatly retarded by a system of journalism that was predominantly non-professional under editorial leadership that was commercial and selfish. And its educational system was mainly proprietary, chiefly technological, and biologically weak. As Guy's began his investigation into dental research, he realized a trend in medical education that deeply disturbed him. In his own words, As I proceeded with the ensuing researches, 
I soon became conscience smitten by the fact that not only had most physicians been ignoring dental conditions, but also in the medical schools, the teachers of the so-called medical sciences, myself among them, had been overlooking or disregarding the teeth. This strikingly negative situation, with its prejudices and injustices, clearly represented a serious public detriment. From the day of that realization to this, I have had an increasing purpose in serving the public welfare to promote the advancement of dentistry. During the next decade, Guy's enthusiastically undertook the biomedical research projects proposed by the doctors Howe and Merritt and launched a movement that would change the face of dentistry forever. Guy's, already a successful researcher, was profoundly aware of the lack of scientific information in the dental field and in 1919 founded the Journal of Dental Research. Just one year later, his call for an army of scientists from around the world to investigate the cause of dental disease provided the impetus for the formation of the International Association for Dental Research. William Guise was also a shaping force in dental education and forged a philosophy that would become the cornerstone of the medically-based dental curriculum, one that did not simply turn out tradesmen, but a non-proprietary school validated by a recognized institution of higher learning. And so, in 1916, in response to Guy's progressive ideas, the School of Dental and Oral Surgery was organized at Columbia University. The publication of the Carnegie Commission of the Guy's Report in 1926 was perhaps Guy's most outstanding contribution. His conclusions had a profound impact on dental education. He called for higher pre-professional standards, more and better basic science instruction, greater correlation between clinical medicine and dentistry, more opportunities for structured training in the specialties, and a greater commitment for ongoing research. Guise continued to serve as professor of biochemistry at Columbia, editor of the Journal of Dental Research, general secretary of the International Association for Dental Research, and was a member of many other scientific organizations. During his career, he published over 600 papers, pamphlets, and books. Since 1950, the William J. Guy's Foundation for the Advancement of Dentistry, created to carry out Guy's ideals, has given its support and funding for scholarly journalism and research in dentistry. Current projects and awards of the Foundation include support for the Journal of Dental Research, Support for the Dental Teacher Training Fellowship Program of the American Fund for Dental Health. The Guy's Award in Editorial Writing. The Guy's Award for Research in Periodontics. The Guy's Award for Research in Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. The Guy's Award for Latin American Dental Research. Scholarships for students at Columbia and Marquette Universities. A biography. William J. Guy's His Contribution to the Advancement of Dentistry by Dr. Frank Orland, 1993. For further information, please contact the William J. Guy's Foundation for the Advancement of Dentistry, 839 Quince Orchard Boulevard, Suite J, Gaithersburg, Maryland, 20878-1603, 301 977 3223.